Hi, I'm Mateen Durrani, the editor of Physics World, and we're here today at the CERN Particle Physics Lab in Geneva, and we've come to talk to Professor Rolf Dieter Hoyer, who's been Director General of the lab since the start of 2009. Uh, Rolf, first off, um, nine days after the first protons were circulated around the LHC last September, um, the collider broke down following an ele electrical fault. Um, can you explain why it's taken so long to get the machine back up and running? When the electrical fault appeared, uh, the cooling of the, through the, by the liquid helium stopped and therefore the liquid helium was evaporating. And once tons of liquid helium are evaporating, you can well imagine what, uh, what a shockwave went through the tunnel. And we had to take out 53 magnets out of roughly 2,000. We had to repair them or replace them by their spares. The beam vacuum, that means the vacuum pipe in which the uh, protons under normal circumstances circulate, broke and that contaminated then uh, several hundred meters of uh, vacuum pipe that all had to be cleaned in situ, that means in the tunnel. That all takes a lot of time. But what takes even more time is to avoid such an incident again. We have introduced new measures uh, with much higher accuracy to measure temperature increases and uh, to measure the resistances of such 10,000 uh, connections. And there we are in the order of nano-ohms in the accuracy, which is uh, quite an achievement. But in order to do all this, you need time. You need to develop new electronic cards, several hundred new electronic cards. You have to pull uh, more than 250 kilometers of cable. And that, has to, that all takes a time. People were certainly not uh, uh, squiggling with their thumbs or, or sleeping, so, but they were all working very, very hard. And we are now coming, fortunately, towards an end of all this repair and new installation. What's the current timetable for, for getting the LHC um, up and running and when do you expect collisions at maximum energy to take place? I expect the injection of beam into the LHC again somewhere in, let's say, mid-November. And then hopefully collisions uh, within a few weeks after that. That means this year I hope that we have the first collisions. I'm pretty confident that we will have the first collisions. The energy will not be the maximum energy at the very beginning. We will go in a few steps. First of all, the experiments want to have collisions at the uh, injection energy, which would mean 2 times 450 GeV, that means at 0.9 TeV of center of mass energy. Then we will accelerate and the particles and then go to a collision energy of 7 TeV in the center of mass. And there we will stay for several months, depending on what the experiments find, depending on how the running experience, the operation experience with the LHC will be. And then we will go in the course of the next year up to an energy of 10 TeV in the center of mass. The maximum energy of uh, the machine is 14 TeV, but in order to go from 10 TeV to 14 TeV, we have to do some more modifications, and for this we need a longer shutdown. So the present plan is to run until the end of next year, and then have a longer shutdown in order to prepare the machine to be able to go to 14 TeV center of mass energy. So 14 TV collisions will take place in 2011? I would hope that it's 2011, yes. But of course, if we find something interesting at 10 TV, we would continue running at 10 TV. How do you react to suggestions that the LHC is too complex a machine to ever function properly, that it could be a white elephant? Well, I understand that question, but I react rather negatively to it because I mean, the 10th of September has shown how well the machine and the functioning of the machine is in the hands of the operators. They know very well how to run that machine. And uh, if I compare the time to inject the beam and to capture it in order to keep it running, uh, coasting in the machine, was much, much shorter compared to LAP, that was a predecessor in, in, in the same tunnel, which was supposed to be a much easier machine. And the fact that it went much faster gives me a great deal of confidence that we understand the machine and we will run that machine soon very well. And what lessons do you think the lab has learned from last year's accident? The first very positive lesson we have learned is that the staff is highly motivated, the staff is ex and the users. Now, I should not forget the users, sorry. And uh, it's, it's able, the staff and users are able to react uh, to such incidents, to, to come up with new measures, to come up with new methods to do things. Once they are challenged, they are able to do all this. And that was one very, very positive message. The other one is, which is also towards my own philosophy, maybe of management or in general, one step after the other. Don't rush too much and do things very well. 
And from a personal point of view, what's been the biggest challenge for you in taking over from the previous Director General, Robert Amar? Well, the first challenge was a sort of unexpected one because after this high level of excitement, positive excitement after the 10th of September, people were of course falling into a deep, deep hole in, on the 19th of September, that's clear. I mean, the difference was much, much bigger than you could ever expect. So the first challenge was to get people out of this hole again and to, to, to get them in, into an optimistic phase. And one way to do that was to involve them in all types of decisions technically and uh, schedule-wise. And uh, that, to my mind, brought the spirit up very quickly. Then the other thing is uh, that to also involve the users, that means all the institutes from, from the, uh, who are not, uh, from with all people who are not staff of CERN, to involve them in that work and to, to get them very, very closely in, uh, in contact with the machine people. I think that was also one of the challenges, but I think it worked. And what do you hope to achieve by the time you step down as CERN boss in, at the end of 2013? Well, first of all, I hope and I'm sure that the LHC is up and running at 14 TV for a long time and uh, that will have enabled the physicists to get the first discoveries. And the first discoveries at LHC will, to my mind, tell us which way nature wants us to go after the LHC. History has shown that the knowledge which we have at the energy frontier in particle physics is only through the combination of results of electron and positron colliders and proton-proton or proton-antiproton colliders. If you leave out one of these uh, legs, uh, you lose a lot of information and we would not know what we know today. Therefore, I'm convinced that we need another E plus E minus collider. Which energy? I don't know. And that LHC will tell us. And we have two different uh, technologies uh, in the pipeline and then we see which one to do. And I would hope that I'm able to help shaping the future of particle physics with the discoveries at the LHC during my mandate. That's at least Hoyer's wishful thinking. And I know one of your priorities is to broaden the international perspective of CERN. Could you explain what you're hoping to do in that direction? CERN has, be, has been established uh, 55 years ago as a European laboratory, but the convention does not Forbi uh, not forbid explicitly the participation in the CERN uh, as a CERN partner, as a CERN member by uh, non-European states. Now CERN, although, in, uh, uh, although in a European laboratory, is used by the international community. And now this is the same is true for KEK in Japan, for example, or Fermilab uh, in the US. But with, this, with the start of the LHC, there's a sort of symmetry breaking. Now, most of the particle physicists are coming to CERN, so there's a real symmetry breaking, so why not involving some of the uh, nations from the Americas or Asia as members or so, some sort of members at least in CERN and uh, helping to shape the, the, the future of particle physics. This would enable us to start the next global project really as a global project from the very beginning, be it at CERN or be it elsewhere. Yeah? So we also have to be open to participate in, uh, in other regions. And it's very important beside that global project to have also regional projects in the Americas, in Asia or in Europe and national projects. We have to keep the expertise of particle physics and particle accelerator laboratories in all regions. And uh, by working internationally more closely together, I think we can also fine-tune our programs in the different regions much, much better. And this is the way I would like to move CERN forward. And do you see CERN hosting the International Linear Collider? I think I would be a bad DG, I would be a bad Director General if I would not push for CERN at least bidding for the next global project call it International Linear Collider, call it Compact Linear Collider. But I think CERN is a fantastic place. CERN has proven that it can host such a, a project and therefore I think CERN should do it. But competition is always welcome. Good, thank you.